partial fractions. We get partial fractions when we break up a fraction into two simpler fractions. It is the reverse of adding or subtracting two fractions. So it's sort of like the factoring of addition or subtraction where normally factoring is the reverse of uh, multiplication. Example, decompose the following fractions into the sum of two partial fractions. So we're going to take the fraction 8x plus 19 divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6 and we're going to break it up into the sum of two other fractions. Now we first do this by factoring the denominator. And when we factor this denominator we get x plus 3 times x plus 2. So then we break the original fraction up into two fractions. a over x plus 3 plus b over x plus 2. So we take our two factors of the original denominator and we separate them and put them into two separate fractions. Now we don't know what the a and the b are, so that will be our goal. Find the a and find the b and then we'll have been successful in separating this fraction into the sum of two other fractions. So now next we're going to take that a over x plus 3 plus the b over x plus 2 and we're going to add them together. So we add them together by finding a common denominator, which would be the product of the two things, x squared plus 5x plus 6. So therefore we're going to have to multiply the a times the x plus 2 and the b times the x plus 3. So we get ax plus 2a plus bx plus 3b, all divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now you should try this out on your own. Can you add those two fractions together by finding a common denominator and getting what I got? So then we're going to put the x's together, so the ax plus the bx in the numerator. We're going to put them at the beginning and factor out the x. And then we're going to put the 2a plus 3b uh, on the right side of that. So we get the quantity a plus b times x equals 2a plus 3b all divided by x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now since the first and the last fractions above have the same denominators, so look at that, the one way in the beginning, the one we started with, has the same denominator as our final one. The numerators must therefore also be equal. Therefore this implies that a plus b must equal 8 because it's the numerical coefficient of the x and the 2a plus 3b must equal 19 because they're both constant terms, they don't have x in them. Solving this pair of simultaneous linear equations, we take the a plus b equals 8 and the 2a plus 3b equals 19 and I use elimination or addition by multiplying the top one by a negative 3, both sides of it, and then when we add the two together we're going to get a negative a equals a negative 5 which implies a is equal to 5. And then putting 5 into either equation and the top one would be the, the a plus b equals a would be the easiest one. Then you can see that b has to equal 3. So once again, you may have to review solving simultaneous linear equations. And I use addition, so you should try that on your own to see if you agree with me. Therefore, the partial fractions are 5 over x plus 3 plus 3 over x plus 2. Because once again, we found the a and the b, so we plugged them in. And now you should test this by actually adding those back together. Does it really